Texoma's number one rated newscast, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at noon. Right now at noon, we're live from a massive fire at Highport Marina on Lake Texoma. President Trump meets with Republican senators hoping to save their failing health care bill. I'm Weijia Jang on Capitol Hill with the latest coming up. And another drowning here in Texoma, this time at Turner Falls. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for News 12 at noon. I'm Lauren Smith. And I'm Jesse Schroeder. Well, new here at noon, a massive dock fire this afternoon in Pottsboro at High Point Marina. News 12's Kristen Weaver is live near the fire to give us the latest details. Kristen. Yeah, guys, you can see some of the, the huge clouds of smoke right behind me. About 22 boats have caught on fire. The good news is right now you can see some of the smoke has turned more of a grayish white. That is a good thing. That means that more water is getting on the fire and things are looking to be in a good direction right now. Right now I'm going to have you guys take a look at some of this video that we caught a little bit earlier. So the thick black clouds of smoke about a half an hour ago, the fire did begin this morning at around 10 a.m. Witnesses we spoke with tell us a maintenance worker was working on a boat when it caught fire. He did have minor burns to his arms and was checked out by a local nurse at the scene. Right now, we still are unsure if anybody was seriously injured. But take a listen at what some of the witnesses we spoke with told us. We felt very helpless, for sure, and felt very disheartened for a lot of clients um, and boat owners, for sure. Yeah, well, actually, right now, we have our own Dan Thomas here. Hi, Dan. Hey, Kristen. Dan, well, Dan actually has some friends and family that live out here and work out here. So, Dan, tell us what was going through your mind when you first saw some of these black clouds out here. Yeah, I came out of my driveway around 10 a.m., uh, saw the huge black cloud of smoke, called into the newsroom and found out that it was at Highport. So my thoughts immediately went to uh, my friends and family out here that have boats. Uh, got out here. Unfortunately, um, I do know some people that have boats near here. I don't know anybody on that dock. I got in touch with everybody. As you can imagine, uh, texts and phone calls going out. Um, thankfully, no one was hurt. Glad to see that. But yeah, I actually got out here before the fire crews got out here. That was a, uh, you could hear these pops, which I presume it's kind of sounded like a shotgun going off. I, I assume it was the gas tanks uh, just exploding from the pressure. Uh, out there, but yeah, uh, amazing to see, uh, you know, that's a lot of people's dream boats out there uh, just uh, up in flames today. Sad to see. Again, we're going to have more details as soon as we get them. Just stay with KXII on our website and our app. For now, I'm live in Pottsboro, Kristen Weaver, News 12. Thanks, Kristen, for that. And we're going now to a live look with our Tanglewood Tower Cam. This is currently live streaming over on our KXII Facebook page if you want to check it out. This video was shared over 55,000 times, has had nearly 1.4 million people that have been reached. Tom, our tower cams really allow us to take our viewers really straight to the scene of any news events. And then, man, during severe weather season, those come in handy as well. Of course, any kind of weather event, we have those tower cams. and. You saw there at Tanglewood what was happening at Highport Marina. Well, let's take a look at our Sherman Tower cam, and you could see a long ways away, but we could still see that plume of smoke. And also behind it, you could see a few cumulus clouds. We do have some heat, and as a matter of fact, a heat advisory in effect for Pushmata and Choctaw County until 9 o'clock tonight. And we could see those heat advisories expanded as we head into tomorrow as well as into the weekend. Yeah, highs are going to heat up. We're going to be in the 90s. Heat index values over 100 today and through the weekend. But there is an opportunity of rain, and we'll talk about it in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Tom. Davis police say a 34 year old man drowned at Turner Falls Park overnight. Officers tell us they responded to the swimming area inside the park around 2:30 this morning. They say a friend of Orlando Guerrero from Hearst, Texas, called police and reported the 34 year old missing. The friend told officers that Guerrero was last seen getting in the water on the west side of the swimming area. First responders searched that area and found his body shortly after 4 o'clock this morning in about 10 feet of water. Police say Guerrero had been camping at the park. An 18 month old has died after being run over by a vehicle. The Carter County Sheriff's Department responded last night to a house on Mount Washington Road around 9 o'clock after getting a call that an 18 month old was run over and had stopped breathing. 
The name of the child has not yet been released. A man is wanted by authorities after setting off a manhunt in Bryan County yesterday afternoon. Chief Deputy Steve Neighbors says yesterday afternoon he was going to help another deputy on a traffic stop when a motorcycle cut into his lane near Leavenworth and Smizer and then sped off. After police, or after rather less than a mile, the suspect got off the bike, hopped a fence, and ran away. More law enforcement and even a police dog searched for him, but the dog lost the suspect in a tree line. Everybody says, you know, and we're in the, the, the dog days of summer, and it is hot. These uniforms don't breathe very much, especially when uh, you start tracking a guy. We're told the suspect has been identified, but is not yet in custody. Police say a man with connections to the Mexican Mafia was arrested in Hilton yesterday. Holly Miller was arrested on a Texas warrant and signed extradition papers this afternoon. Hilton Police Chief Johnny Turner says there was a report of suspicious activity at the Hilton Lake bathrooms where they found a Miller and arrested him on the warrant. He says a Texas sheriff later called him and told Turner that Miller was a meth cook who stole a pickup truck to get out of Texas. Turner believes Miller was visiting relatives relatives in the area and could have been getting ready to cook meth in Carter County. Authorities are investigating after a truck crashed into a train just south of Valley View last night. Details are few at this time, but we're told the driver, 56-year-old Stephen Gunther of Valley View, was flown to Plano in critical condition. DPS says Gunther was driving westbound when he struck a northbound train, but how or why it happened is still unknown. Republican senators are headed to the White House for a working lunch with President Trump to discuss health care. Weijia Jiang has more details from Capitol Hill. When we finally get a chance to repeal and replace, they don't take advantage of it. Frustrated by the failing GOP health care bill, President Trump is stepping in. This morning he tweeted, I will be having lunch at the White House today with Republican senators concerning health care. They must keep their promise to America. But moderates and conservatives can't agree on the best way to move forward. So Republican leaders are now moving on to a straight repeal of Obamacare with no replacement. So until there's a vote, there's still an opportunity to come up with something which is common ground for enough folks to pass legislation. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is moving forward with the bill, even though he does not have enough votes to pass it. He says it's at the request of the president and vice president. This is the same legislation that a majority of the Senate voted to send to the president in 2015. Now we thankfully have a president in office who will sign it. So we should send it to him. Democrats say they're standing by, waiting to work with Republicans to fix Obamacare. They closed us off. They thought they could do it on their own. Now it's clear they can't. And the door is open again. The vote on the repeal only bill is supposed to happen early next week. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Capitol Hill. President Trump had a second conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin at this month's G20 summit. This comes as we are learning more about who was at the meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer. Here's Mullalenghi. The Trump administration is downplaying a second conversation between President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin hours after the two leaders held this meeting at the G20 summit earlier this month. The second conversation happened during a dinner attended by the G20 leaders and their spouses. Mr. Putin was sitting next to First Lady Melania Trump. Later on, the president reportedly left his seat to go speak with Mr. Putin for nearly an hour using Mr. Putin's translator. He went into without talking points, without his own interpreter, without a note taker. The White House acknowledged the previously undisclosed conversation last night, calling it brief and informal. And President Trump defended himself on Twitter, saying, Fake news story of secret dinner with Putin is sick. All G20 leaders and spouses were invited by the Chancellor of Germany. Press knew. The revelation comes as the list of attendees at Donald Trump Jr.'s 2016 meeting with a Russian lawyer with possible ties to the Kremlin continues to grow. CBS News has confirmed Ike Kavaladze, a Soviet-born businessman who came to the U.S. in 1991, was also at the meeting, along with son-in-law Jared Kushner, campaign chairman Paul Manafort, the Russian lawyer, and a Russian-American lobbyist. Kavalatse's lawyer claims his client thought he was there to serve as an interpreter, but was not needed. Mola Lenghi for CBS News, Washington. Coming up on News 12 at Noon, weekend warriors rejoice the new tool that will cut the grass 
for you. But first, we're taking another live look over at High Point Marina, where there's a huge fire there. That amount of smoke, though, has really gone down in the past hour. It sure has, and some of that smoke is now white, meaning some of the flames are starting to be put out. You'll also notice the white oil boom there, trying to keep the gas and oil that is spilled into the water contained. We'll have more on that right after this. Well, robots are starting to become a reality around the house. There are small bots that vacuum the floor, change a litter box, or clean your grill. Yeah, now they're starting to cut the grass. Omar Villafranca shows us. A small gizmo resembling a vacuum scuttles across a front lawn in Plano, Texas, representing a solution for homeowner James Grimm. The idea that the robotic mower can do the mowing in the evening or at night, um, even at 2 in the morning if I want because it's so quiet. While robotic mowers are available for sale for about $1,000 or more, Grimm leases his from a landscaping business called Robin. Co-founders Justin Crandall and Bart Lamont didn't invent robot mowers, but they're committed to making them an integral part of their business. Americans already outsource landscaping, right? The question is, is it a guy who shows up on a dirty gas-powered mower that emits a ton of pollution and rides around on my lawn, or do we have this emissions-free electric robot who handles the job? To work properly, a technician buries a guide cable along the perimeter of a lawn. The mower won't cross that cable, keeping it out of the street and away from flower beds. The robot is programmed to find its recharging station when it's done mowing or when the battery runs low. Household robots are a booming business, and one study predicts the home and office robotics market to hit $1.5 billion by 2019, more than double what it was in 2014. Colin Engel is CEO and co-founder of iRobot, the company responsible for the Roomba vacuum cleaner. Robots are best designed for a single task. It allows us to uh, make it cost effective, um, really focus on doing that one job really well. That may be less spectacular than science fiction, but it beats pushing a mower in the hot sun. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Plano, Texas. I'm all for it, especially on a day like today. I no, know. Kidding. I want to know where that was when I had to mow the lawn all those times in high school. <laughs> Mom and dad. Mom, dad. <laughs> there really is a serious side to that. I mean, it's well, the, really yeah, important the, anytime you can Yeah, be sure to drink a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. Heat index it. values approaching 105 later this afternoon. Make sure you drink plenty of water. We're still looking at our Tanglewood Tower Cam at the fire there at uh, Highport Marina. We'll have a look at our forecasts when we come back. You're watching News 12 at Noon with Jesse Schroeder, Lauren Smith, and from the Weather Authority, here's Tom Miller. Heat advisory for Pushmataha and Choctaw counties until 9 o'clock this evening. We're looking at those heat index values being around 105, maybe up to 108, and we may see those heat advisories expanded, maybe not so much today but tomorrow and into the weekend as we're expecting those heat index values on average to be around 105. And again, this is our Tanglewood Tower Cam. And looking at, this is Boat Dock U at, uh, well, Highport Marina, and it had caught on fire around 10 o'clock this morning. And the, uh, well, the crews have been out trying to fight the fire, but again, with this metal roof, all the heat goes out. So a lot of those firefighters just haven't been able to get to it. There's one of the fire boats right there. And plus, we've been seeing a wind shift. Right now, it looks like the winds are from west to east, but at times, they'll be uh, blowing from south to north, and then the smoke turns back, and that makes it awfully hard as it'll be blowing from the uh, uh, north to the south. So they've really been battling that. And of course, the numerous boats that have been uh, claimed by the fire, it has just been a very hot fire for them and they're doing their best. Uh, looking at the smoke from a distance away, this is from our Sherman Tower cam. You can still see quite a bit burning there. And looking above it, we are seeing some cloud cover and don't think we'll see an isolated shower pop out of that quite yet. But there's the possibility of maybe a stray shower developing later this afternoon across Texoma. If so, it wouldn't last very long. And our chances are about 5% or maybe even less than that. Uh, we had lows in the uh, 
70s, a few 60s as we drop down to 67 in Atoka, but now 91 in Ardmore, 92 in Sherman and Denison, 91 in Durant, 90 degrees in Ada, and winds out of the south to southwest. They're variable at about 3 to 10 miles per hour. We have 93 in Paris, 90 degrees in Atoka, 90 in Davis and Sulphur, 91 in Gainesville. Let's add the humidity to the temperatures and look at those heat index values now anywhere from around 98 to 104. Heat index value in Paris around 104. 96 was the high yesterday in Sherman and Denison. 94 in Ardmore, just below the normal in Ardmore, but just above the normal in Sherman and Denison. Normal low should be around 72. It's 95 in St. Louis, 91 in Memphis, Houston at 92 degrees, 93 in Dallas and Oklahoma City. 77 in Las Vegas, got a little rain shower cooling them down. Well, Atlanta's a hot 92, and there's that stubborn ridge of high pressure. It's going to just wander across the southern plains over the next really several days. It may weaken a little bit as we head into the beginning of next week, which may aid in an opportunity of a scattered to isolated shower. But really, our chances of any rain over the next two, three days, less than 5%. Didn't even put it in the forecast. And then we'll wait patiently for an upper level wave to develop and that will start to send a cold front through the northern Rockies, which that front may not make its way into Texoma, but it may be close enough Monday to give us that opportunity of an ice sled shower. And again, speaking of an ice sled shower, futurecast model like the past few days showing that there's that potential. And we did see an isolated shower develop around Shreveport, made its way towards Clarksville earlier this morning, and it dissipated before sunrise. But again, very quiet. So a hot 96 today. That'll be an average. Heat index values approaching 105, south winds of 5 to 15. Tonight, 74 with light southeasterly winds, and it's going to be muggy. Little change Thursday and Friday. Sunshine, a high of 97 Thursday. Friday, 98. Heat index values approaching 108 Friday, so we really need to be careful. Saturday, we're looking at 97, 96. Sunday with maybe an isolated shower late Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, partly cloudy skies around 94 to 95 with a 20% chance of a scattered shower or thunderstorm. A lot of kids have that phase where they ask a lot of questions. Why is the sky blue? Why are puppies furry? Just on and on, right? Well, there's a new child-friendly feature available on Google Assistant that aims at answering some of those questions in a child-friendly way. It's called Google Assistant Kids. Essentially, the feature relies on the premise that the internet answers are often too complex for little ones. So Google Assistant Kids detects a child's age by pitch and pronunciation, then answers with a response that's age appropriate. Okay, Google, what is a rainbow? It's a curved line of different colors that sometimes appears in the sky when the sun shines through the rain. Google Assistant Kids works on the Google app for smartphones and tablets or with a Google Home device. That's The Motherboard. I'm Rebecca Rainier. Welcome back, everyone. We have our pet expert, Amy Shojai, joining us at this noon hour to talk to us today about making going to the vet a better experience for you and your pets. <laughs> Welcome, Amy. Uh, and of yes. course, like humans, dogs have different personalities and different feelings Absolutely. about going to the doctor. So how can you yeah, reduce dogs and their cats anxiety both. a little bit? Yeah. Uh, dogs and cats both. And there is a new initiative, the Fear Free Initiative, that was started by my friend and colleague, Dr. Marty Becker. Okay. A lot of people may know him. Uh, and you can go to fearfreepets.com to learn more about okay. that. But the issue with fear is that it not only makes it a very unpleasant experience mm -hmm. for the pet and for the veterinarian and right. the staff and ever I mean a scared dog is likely to you know struggle possibly even bite with cats the same is true they hide and fear and stress causes more health issues so if if you are upset because the dog is upset and you don't take him to the vet that's a whole nother thing. Right. So I've just let I've just released another one of my quick tips books. These Excellent. are these are really quick uh, tips. There's a there's was already a cat one uh -huh. available, and it's just called My Dog Hates the Vet: Foiling Fear Before, During, and After Veterinary Visits. Okay. Because a lot of people don't realize even when you bring your dog home, that he may have 
bad interactions with the other pets because he smells funny now. Yeah, you don't think about that. You don't really think about that. So these are tips why the pet may feel fearful, what you can do at home to prepare mm -hmm. the dog so that when he goes to the vet, hey boy, I get to go to the vet, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get treats, I'm gonna get petted, all of that good stuff, how the veterinarian can help and then what you can do when you can get okay. home. So it's not just for the pet owners, it's also for veterinarians who want Absolutely. to take a look at that. Absolutely. For veterinarians, vet techs, uh, I have become certified as a fear-free certified uh, behavior consultant. Veterinarians do that as well. Technicians do that. They are coming up with pet owner sites. So stay tuned for that. Whole clinics will be able to be, become certified. And basically what that means is they've all bought into the idea I don't want to hold your dog down to give him vaccinations. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to feed him peanut butter at one end while I trim his nails mm -hmm. at the other end and the dog never knows the difference. It's all about distractions. It's all about <laughs> distractions. And you know, when you have a new puppy or a new kitten, take him to the vet for three or four visits before he ever gets that rude thermometer okay. you know, inserted. Yes, yes. So he gets to go and find out all about the veterinary clinic and it's not a scary place and he associates it with good things for him. And that's a great way to set your puppy or your kitty up for a positive interaction. And then you're gonna take him to the vet when he needs it, and it becomes a true partnership with veterinary health. Yeah, very good, very important. And once again, where can you get those books? Yes, these are, um, the My Cat Hates the Vet is already available on all ebook platforms. Okay. Uh, My Dog Hates the Vet, the, the print is available. The ebook version is releasing August 1st. You can learn more about it at amyshujai.com okay. on my blog, so it tells all about it there. Excellent, thank you so much, thank Amy. You. We'll be right back after this. We're now taking a live look back at Highport Marina. We do have a chopper over the scene at this time. And Tom, that wind today has kind of caused some problems for the firefighters. Yeah, it has been blowing out of the north and then the south. So, and you can imagine the heat that's been trapped underneath that metal roof coming out has been really tough for those, uh, uh, really those fire boats to fight that. And plus you have, what, over a dozen boats that are on fire. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're doing. I just hope they're safe. Yeah, right. absolutely. Thanks, Tom. And of course, be sure and tune back in tonight at 5. We'll have a lot more updates on the Highport Marina Fire. Thanks for joining us.